Welcome back. In this video, I plan to cover the two-handed axes, the evening star, quarterstaff, and maul. If you like chopping off limbs and crunching skulls, getting in there with that pokey pokey stick, or that big heavy pokey stick, then this video is for you. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Cool. I come here tonight to make you laugh. I came here to sell you something. I want you to pay particular attention because the amazing Master Tool Corporation, a subsidiary of Fly By Night Industries, has entrusted who? Me. To show you the handiest and the dandiest kitchen tool you've ever seen. What in the hell could it possibly be? It is Flint a medic! <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, okay, I've been knocked more than I can chew. <laughs> so this is one I don't even have to cover, right? We all know about the mall by now, right? I mean, you've all seen the countless mall meme videos and, and smash-ups of techno and electronic music to mall clips, right? Well, in case you've been living under a rock for the last nine months, the mall is a meme weapon. Powerful, glorious, unrivaled in what it does, which is crunching skulls. The Maul has a fantastic one-shot on heads, no matter what they're wearing. Light armor, medium armor, heavy plate helmets, no matter what you have on your noggin. As far as the Maul's concerned, you might as well be wearing a paper bag over your head. Generally, there are two types of builds for the Maul. The first is the Light Maulman. We'll call him Jester. People hate me. Level 1 helmet, level 2 armor, and running around holding the sprint button. Weaving in and out of your swings. The Jester is out there for a laugh, literally. And you'll hear that foppish laugh right after he caves in your cranium. Coming up behind the enemy where you can't see him and knocking their block off before they have time to turn around. The Jester is definitely my favorite way to play. Second wind is a must, and Cat is just kind of fun to throw on there. She can drop out of nowhere and slam a hammer on him. The second variant for the mall user is the tank. A real man fights a panzer at close range! Decked out in full level 3 plate armor, this shiny behemoth takes his time, struts his stuff, and just plain doesn't give a fuck. These are the kinds of guys who exclusively use the cool voice. They love to prey upon the lightly armored and they'll faint regardless if you'll panic parry or not. They know you will, and they know that their hammer is coming right to your head. All joking aside though, it's understandable why people hate this weapon. It's slow, it hits like a Mack truck, but most people parry long before it even arrives. I mean, they end up putting themselves in a really tough spot. What if I want to panic Perry before he faints? Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. The mall isn't immune to dealing friendly damage either. Many's a man who's fallen under a friendly mallet. And you know, people talk a lot about blunt weapons stopping on hit, but I seem to get plenty of double kills with the mall. I don't know how this works. And just when you thought the mallman was done, they have one last trick to pull out. And that's its alt mode. Or lack thereof. What I mean is you hit R and you chuck that big old boy. If you're fighting a jester, they're going to have an arming sword or a cleaver as a backup. So they're just going to throw everything at you. But I mean, if you see a mall user backing up, it usually means you've been weighed. You've been measured. And you've been found wanting. You fat fryer with my trusty quarter staff. Actually, it's a buck and a quarter quarter staff, but I'm not telling him that. Such a simple weapon. Agile, easy to use, 
it's literally just a stick. This might explain why it's got such a low cost, but don't let its simplicity fool you. In the hands of the right person, this is as lethal as a sword or axe. Oh, uh, hurt, dodge, uh, uh. What the quarterstaff lacks in damage output, it makes up for with blazing speed. It might not be able to cut off heads, but it will poke you in the back of the head until your scrambled brains are leaking out your ears. Jump down and say some fucking gay shit. I'm gay. <laughs> the quarterstaff is a simple weapon for simple people. It only does blunt damage, but its stabs are as fast as lightning. And they'll ring your bell harder than a hunchback. By the time the stick boy is done with you, you'll be more sore than a goose destined to be foie gras. So next time you see the guy from the cover of Led Zeppelin 4, don't be surprised when he starts taking branches off of his back and starts bashing you in the head with them. The alt mode for the quarterstaff gives you more reach in exchange for doing a little less damage. Most of the people you see out there with the quarterstaff are just running around trying to have a good time. They like to annoy people with its speed, but they know the quarterstaff isn't a weapon designed for multiple opponents at once. Which leads me to the main people who use this weapon. The Duel Troll. Good day! Did you think we were going to find another knight with weapons and armor? Well, this guy decided to jump up out of bed, grab a broom, and beat the local nobleman's brat to death with it. <laughs> no, no, no! Oh. <laughs> the quarterstaff's low equip cost lets them use dodge, second wind, pretty much any perk they want, along with level 2 armor. While you're trying to get a swing in, they'll be prancing around, stabbing you in the noggin. Listen, They can be annoying to deal with at first, but if you manage to hit them and outwit them, they usually crumble. Bastard. Bastard. Oh no! But man, the quarterstaff is a lot of fun. You can get in some really cheeky situations. Oh my god, how did you get up here too? Me and a couple friends have even made quarterstaff loadouts to pester people, running around role-playing as British cops, trying to confiscate everyone's knives. So if you want to join in, feel free to make your own donut operator. Put your hands behind your back! Put your hands behind your back! No! Oh, no, brother! You lose! Oh! Stop right there, criminal scum! Nobody breaks the law on my watch! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Then pay with your blood! Put your hands behind your back. <laughs> Come here, put the cuffs on him, Josh. I got him. The world's safe. Cleaver, Skull Splitter, the Rippin and the Terran, the Rippin and the Terran, a tool made for war. Basically, it's a big fuck all axe. Easily able to one shot level one heads, this weapon rips and tears through opponents like a wood chipper. As you'd expect from a huge double-sided axe, this weapon is great at chopping wood, 
doing more damage to structures than any other weapon, making it an obvious choice to pair with Wrecker. Wood or flesh, it's all the same to the War Axe. Usually this is where I would forget to talk about the alt mode of the weapon, but we all know there is no alt mode for the War Axe. But what if there was? See, I think there's no alt mode for the War Axe because within it resides a secret power, one that can only be unlocked through the blood sacrifice of your own teammates. That's the only explanation I can give for all the team killing. There's no way it can be ignorant, spastic, horizontal swinging. Even when I started using this thing, it feels like it just wants to kill your friends. It's like a blind rage comes over the user, and they can't stop until everything in front of them is dead. Friend and foe alike. <laughs> I, uh, didn't mean to. I apologize. Thank you, Squire. I was thinking, though, what if instead we do away with the needless friendly bloodshed and we give players the ability to just chuck it like a true Norseman? The War Axe is generally used by bloodthirsty berserkers who run around half-naked. They'll be stacked with bloodlust, second wind, and no armor. If you run into someone with this weapon, they're gonna try and drag using its wonky animation. They'll try and faint you out. And if those don't work, they'll switch to stabbing with it. Oh, and they will always target lightly armored or heavily injured opponents. They use them like health packs, going from one to the next to top off their health. Whoa, big bitch! Give me this, Vosk! Truly, this is a tryhard's weapon. Evening Star isn't a class all its own. Some consider it a polearm, some call it a blunt weapon. Whatever you call it, I call it totally and completely badass. It swings almost as slow as the ball, but has a bit more reach, dealing vicious blows to heads and bodies. It's easily able to one-shot unprotected and level one heads. With the reach of the bastard sword and the skull-crushing ability of the mace, this big old boy is no joke. Uh, unless you mod it to have a huge penis on the end, then he's kind of funny. Aside from the blunt damage and two-shot potential, the main draw of the Evening Star is its stamina game. It's the Lord of Edging. Each hit your opponent has to block drains their stamina away until the swing where you knock that weapon out of their hand and watch them cower in fear under you. It's so badass they even banned it in tournament play. Though I don't see why. It's not like the weapon is overpowered or anything. I think it's pretty well balanced for duels. Sometimes you need a little less reach, and the alt mode for the Evening Star is great for that. Cutting it down to the same length as a mace, but its stab does way more damage than normal. The Evening Star might be blunt and forced to stop on hit, but if the heads are close enough, I mean, we need to make it work. At the end of the day, this weapon is great for popping people in the melon and watching the juice run out. <laughs> it doesn't cost much so you can use whatever armor and perks you want, though I would suggest Second Wind to counteract the stamina you'll be using up swinging this thing around all day. I am so paralyzed!
a simple length of wood and a heavy metal head. This tool of peasants is one of the most lethal weapons on the battlefield, chopping through a man just as easily as cutting through a mighty pine tree. For a lot of people, their first experience with the battle axe is the raider default loadout. They get out there, they run around, they throw their throwing axes, they swing around their battle axe, and eventually, they get their first decapitation. That satisfying crunch of metal chopping through bones and flesh. My blade! It hungers! For more! The battle axe is great for cutting through heads, legs, arms, feet, pretty much anything made out of meat. When comparing the two axes, the battle axe swings a lot further than the war axe, but still has the same one-shot potential on level 1 helmets. In its alt mode, the battle axe drops down to the length of a hand axe, but doesn't lose any of its damage potential, making it great for getting up close and getting mean. The battle axe is easy to learn. It's great for beginners, but it takes a true master to learn all of its tricks. Okay, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. The star of the show, the Trick Axe Daddy Extraordinaire. Here's Johnny! <laughs> now this guy knows his stuff. He can read a panic parry from a mile away, and he's gonna stab more of your head off lickety split. In fact, most people will fall for this move, so I'd say give it a try once in a while. Stab party. You should also know that the stab for the battle axe is ridiculously fast. And it's really easy to spam. What? I literally can't block that. Nope. You said you want to have a stab party? I have an axe, dude. With a few well-placed stabs, it easily knocks your opponent off guard, leaving them open for a finishing blow. At the end of the day, this tool is great for doing battle. It's also kind of fun to do this thing I like to call sharking. I don't know why I call it that, it's stupid. It's like you're a shark, and every time you see someone who's hurt, you just go from swing to swing, chaining kills on guys who were injured. And that's really fun to do with this thing. So yeah, I would suggest that everybody try out the battle axe. It's kind of one of those weapons that I think everyone should try. Alright, I think that just about covers all the two-handed weapons that aren't swords. Leave a comment down below if you guys want to see two-handed swords next, or if you want to see me do something else, like peasant weapons, ranged weapons. I mean, I guess we could probably do engineer stuff too. So yeah, leave a comment down below, and um, if you made it this far into the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to cover everything as thoroughly as I could, talk about the alt modes for everything. I did miss a few things, like the fact that the evening star can be couched. Really, I just wanted to try and get this out before the patch came out, but I missed that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Later!